the sunny Florida Keys, the southernmost point in the continental United States and home to some of the best sports fishing in the world, not to mention exciting history like pirates and world famous railroads. It's also just such a unique place that it draws people from everywhere who want to see these cool little islands. And today I am going to share with you what you need to know when you come to visit the Florida Keys. Although you can get around Key West just fine without a car, if you want to explore the other Keys, which I highly recommend, you will want to have a car with you. And when you are driving down in that car, take your time on the drive because the drive down is one of the most beautiful parts of the Keys. And you'll also want to bring your patience because traffic can get really backed up during high season. Something you don't want to miss on the drive is when you are crossing over the new Seven Mile Bridge. Once you get past this Pigeon Key part and there's the old part of the bridge, you're going to see a tree growing in the middle of the bridge. That tree's name is Fred and Fred has his own Instagram page, which I'll link below so you can check it out. more, let's say, shabby chic than upscale down here, but you are going to need to budget for upscale prices. It is pretty expensive here, especially during high season, in both your lodging, your food, and your fuel prices. So make sure you are looking at those prices closely and budgeting accordingly. If you're coming to the Keys expecting to find stretches of white sandy beaches, you're probably going to be a little disappointed. Because these islands are on top of coral reefs, the stretches of sandy beaches are few and far between. You'll find a couple here and there, but they are not going to be very long. In fact, I think the longest beach on the Keys is less than a half a mile. So just be prepared for that. If you're a person who likes to take long walks on the beach on your vacation, this is probably not gonna be the place to do that. The Florida Keys are home to the only living coral reef in the continental United States. So make sure you bring your reef safe sunscreen and use plenty of it and try to limit your use of single use plastics while you're down here. are checking national parks off of your list. One of the most remote national parks is about 70 miles off of Key West, the Dry Tortugas. You will need a boat or a float plane in order to get over there and it's, it's pretty pricey. Not to mention that you need reservations really far in advance. The ferry ride that is um, a concession through the national parks will cost you about $190 per person and a float plane trip over there runs about $350 per person. Now if you do have a private boat available that can get you the 70 miles over there, you can take a private boat to the Dry Tortugas, but just know it's, it's kind of a haul over there. It's about a two to three hour boat ride to get to the Dry Tortugas. But if it's one you want to check off your list, it is down here and from what I understand, well worth going to see. Because the keys are so narrow and there's not a lot of beach to walk on, if you're looking for something like a nature trail, don't miss the Curry Hammock State Park Nature Trail. And in fact, you don't need to go into the state park itself and pay the fee there. The nature trail is actually on the Gulf side of US-1 and there's parking for about five vehicles. But this nature trail is so cool. They have all of the trees marked with little blue signs and it takes you through what feels like a Tarzan kind of jungle. It's just beautiful. Plus, you get to come out here to the Gulf side 
and see the Gulf water. The trail is about 1.2 miles long in total, and you can probably do it in flip-flops. That's what we have on, but you will be walking across a lot of coral and some roots and stuff. So you will want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on where your feet go the whole time you're on the trail. The busy season for the Florida Keys runs between December and the beginning of April and it is really busy down here during that time. I'm here in February and it's it's very crowded. You have to wait long lines to get into restaurants and uh, the traffic is not so great. If you want to come during a good shoulder season, come to the Keys between April and June. That way you get to experience the islands when it's a little bit less crowded and before hurricane season hits. No matter what you do, you don't want to miss getting out on the water while you're here in the Florida Keys. You can rent a boat for the week like we did, or you can just find some hidden jewels of places where you can go snorkeling right off of the beach. There are also plenty of tour guides that will be happy to take you out for a fabulous time on the water. don't want to miss either walking or biking on the newly finished bike trail that goes out here on the original part of the Seven Mile Bridge. It goes about two miles in and at the end of the two miles is Pigeon Key. It was one of the original work camps that Henry Flagler used when they were building the railroad back in the early 1900s. It's now being used as a flightless bird sanctuary and you can go down there and walk around. It does cost a little bit. I think it's about $10 per person to go down there but it is a really cool little uh, key out here in the middle of a reef. When you're on the walk and bike ride, make sure you're looking down because you are going over lots of live reefs. So I saw like a manta ray and a sea turtle and a couple of dolphins. It was really, really cool. Not to mention you have a great view of the new bridge that was built in the 1980s. While you're in the Keys, you cannot miss trying the world famous Key Lime Pie. It is thought to have originated by somebody fancying up a dish that the sponge fishermen used to use to keep from getting sick. Whatever its origination, it is just simply delicious. to Key West, you don't want to miss the sunset celebration that happens right here in Mallory Square. It happens every night, but at a different time depending on the season. So check out the website that I'll have linked below for the time when you are going to be here. that the reason that the sunsets are so spectacular down here in the Keys is because the dust blows over from Africa and that causes all the beautiful colors in the sunsets here. The dust is also what made these islands in the first place. Thousands and thousands of years of dust being blown over here finally gave all of the foliage a place to grow. Just a new thing to have learned today. Always learning. how we packed for our Florida Keys trip, check out this video next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Anything you think I should add? That's a wrap. <laughs>